Hi, good evening and welcome to the Deerfield uh, Select Board Board of Health meeting for March 31st, uh, 2020. It is uh, calling the meeting to order at 6.04 uh, p.m. Um, this meeting... Uh, you want me to dial in here? Yes. Okay, so um, I'll dial in and then you can let you know what's going on here. So. Uh, so for those at home, the number is 706-913-1154. Welcome. Please enter your access code. And, and the press access pass code finished. pin is 803-6579-POUND. You will now enter the meeting. There are seven members in this conference. Ah, we have seven members. Wonderful. So thank you all. Sorry for starting the meeting a little late, everybody. Um, so I'm just going to read this. The select board uh, packets can be found on our website. Uh, here is how to get them. When on the home page, go to the calendar and click on the date of the meeting. All the meetings for that day will appear. Click on the link for the meeting you want, which right now is the select board meeting. This will also be the location for the public uh, to access the link for the audio video of the recorded meetings of the day of that meeting. Uh, once you click on that link, put in your full name and email to listen and or watch. Email the assistant town administrator, uh, Jennifer Gannett, at ata at town.deerfield.ma.us if you have any questions or difficulties, and we'll help you, we'll help you, and she'll help you through that. So again, wel welcome to the Select Board Board of Health meeting. Um, we have an agenda that's fairly light tonight, but we wanted to update everybody on what's going on and how we're addressing the COVID-19. Um, and then we have um, to deal with our and talk about our election date and town meeting date, which we're going to postpone. And then later on, we have some um, bond anticipation notes for signature for um, some debt that we have. So um, I guess we'll start right now with the COVID-19 updates. Um, I know, Carolyn, you've been on a meeting. We've been on meetings with... Um, Department of Public Health today, and then you've been on a MAPCO meeting today. So do you want to update yes. people on things? Um, I hope everyone is staying home. We ask you to please be patient. There's like a two-week lag uh, to what the numbers are of people testing positive and being sick from our actions. So we basically locked down the town and the state starting about a couple weeks ago. So hopefully we're going to see... Um, the results of that and have not exploding numbers um, like like New York City. Mm -hmm. So, which um, our prayers are with everyone there. Absolutely. What we have been really busy trying to do this past week is try to reorganize how we're communicating and setting up our emergency teams. It's been really okay. awkward trying to coordinate the county level with the, with the town. So our latest rendition, which is the third rendition, and people have really been working, but it it looks like it's going to be successful. We've reorganized, so on Mondays at 9 a.m., there will be um, uh, our four-town EDS group, emergency dispensing group in South County, having a call. And most other EDSs, there's eight of them in the county, uh, will be meeting prior to Tuesday's MAPCO meeting. But on Monday, we have our four-town um, what is the situation, what is um, working, what's not working. The focus in, focus is on collaboration and building up our volunteer capacity. So um, to, have, to, us, to actually set up an EDS at some point. Um, so then on, on Tuesday. Can I interrupt real quick? Yes. So just to make it clear, because I know people have asked about acronyms and stuff. So oh, okay. EDS is, is our emergency dispensing sites. And really what that is, is if we get a vaccine or if we have uh, flu shots, that kind of thing, and we do a large scale flu clinic or a vaccination, if we get anything in the future, that is a, um, an EDS is a site that we set up either at the Yankee Candle offices or at Frontier 
or um, we've done them at Town Hall in the elementary school or the industrial park, park if it's yeah. large scale. But that's where cars either, if it's a small scale, people walk through. If it's a larger scale or safety issues, as you've seen in South Korea and other areas, they're doing drive-through. So that's kind of just an area and a process and mapping that we have a lot of volunteers that we'll, we'll be asking the public for volunteers in a bit here once we get a script together exactly who we need and what we need them for but pulling all that stuff together for an, uh, an EDS site or, a, or you know, emergency dispensing site. And as you remember, we've been doing the drive up EDS for several years before when we had free vaccine um, donations of about $30,000 of vaccine from the state. Um, they ended that program and so we had have had two tabletops. The latest tabletop was actually March 2nd. So uh, we're, you know, we're trying to be current as much as possible, but we need to get our group together. And it's, you know, just recognizing each other and calling in and, and figuring out what the focus is. But it's collaboration and building our volunteer base yeah. to get ready for vaccine. So what then the information that I got from that phone call on Monday, I will take to, um, we listened to the Department of Public Health's phone call for the week on Tuesday, um, afternoon, and then we have a steering committee meeting of MAPCO, the Mohawk Area Public Health Coalition, which I co-chair, which just finished, and that would decide the messaging for the week. What, what are the topics that need to make sure that we are getting information out? So this week it was a lot. Um, it was understanding when you are out of isolation, um, what happens to, in your house with you know people that maybe be exposed to the person that was sick and you know that kind of stuff um but also really just understanding that we need to be patient this is a long duration event but it will really we will get so much benefit if people will just stay home and be patient it's physical distancing there has been discussion of how safe and how long the aerosol is in the air and how, how the distance it can travel. So um, based on air currents in a room. So the idea is to really physically distance as much as possible, but still try to interact socially, whether it's on um, phone calls or you know, Zoom or whatever. Um, but anyway, so what we're gonna do is have the MAPCO meeting on Tuesday, then Thursday, is a, a MEMA, you know, Massachusetts Emergency Management Call, and we will also be having our Deerfield Town, Deerfield only call on Thursday. If anything emerges from that Thursday call, there is an um, opportunity for a Friday MAPCO meeting. And then we go re-roll into the next week. So the idea is to stay current, It's everything is evolving, and to stay connected. So. We, we set this up. I think it's going to work. It seems like it was fairly efficient. We finished within a little over an hour, which is tremendously different than what we were working on. You know, after two hours or two and a half hours on the phone, you just you're, you glaze over. So this is really going to be much more efficient, I hope. And the idea is to get the, as much information out to people as possible. But right now, there's not a lot of testing. So we don't know what's going on. We have one positive case in Deerfield. Um, and we have certainly, we have several suspected cases, but they are not confirmed or not, or their tests are pending. So the idea is, is to really make an effort to stay home and be safe. And I think, um, so <clears throat> you may have heard, but the governor extended the stay at home, you know, in essential business um, uh, to May 4th. So um, that, that's new today. And, um, you know, it's, it's heartbreaking to hear that this isn't over fast, but we all kind of knew that this was going to be a long-term issue. And I'm just really proud of everybody at, at Town Hall and uh, everybody in Deerfield just taking it to heart and really doing the right thing. And um, one, supporting our businesses that are takeout and um, trying to do what we can to support each other. Um, the senior center's been doing an amazing job getting food out. The schools have been doing great, bringing breakfast and food to um, food to kids. So we, we're really we've done a lot in town, and we've really we've changed our operation of how we run a town um, quite a bit in a short amount of time. And so everybody's head's kind of spinning. But we're um, really proud of everybody, and um, Barb's staff has been doing a great job. Um, 
you may all be pleased that our tax bills went out Friday. So <laughs> what I want to say about that, and Barb may want to add to this, is um, we do obviously need to keep our town running. So, um, but we're asking people not to come in. The whole idea of staying home is to put a stamp on an envelope and mail your taxes in. You do not need to bring them to town hall. I mean, if you must, I think pay we'll- Pay online. Yeah, pay, pay online. online if you pay can. Online. Put it in the mail if you can. Um, do not bring your tax money here. As much as we'd love to see you, just not safe for us, not safe for you. Um, so uh, please, do all you can to pay online and, and mail your tax payment in. Um, do you want to add anything to that, or do you, are you uh, no, that, comfortable? No, that would be the message. Yeah. Um, we have had people stopping by, and they want to drop it off, and they're leaving it out front, and that's yeah. really um, not not what we're looking. We want you to stay home, yep. uh, mail the payment in, go online. Any questions, we are here in the office. Yep. You call may call us. us. Yep. We um, walk people through. Um, we've included a flyer in with the real estate bills, um, kind of step-by-step how to pay online. Yep. 25 cents if you use your checking account number. Um, so cheaper that's than a stamp. Not, yeah, cheaper than a stamp. But yes, uh, the old fashioned way of mailing in a check is fine. Any questions, right. just call us. Yep. We're happy, um, but we really do want to encourage, as much as we you know, try to, uh, you know, our nature is to accommodate and someone calls and they want to drop, you know, but we, we have to fight the urge to accommodate. We want you to stay home. So yes. don't come and drop off your bill. Please right. mail it or go online. Yep. Um, I, I, I just want to emphasize to people what, we, what we're doing is having the town hall being really cleaned and sanitize twice a week and we're nobody I mean this is the first time I've been in for a couple of weeks now right. and the idea is that we're the town hall is not open and and we are in the main meeting room we're not in our off going into the offices of, of you know the right. different um, employees mm -hmm. so we have a safe environment for our employees so they can come in we can keep essential government going um, we're asking them on their own to limit their public exposure outside of work. So we're asking them to sacrifice as well as to show up. So it, mm -hmm. it really is incumbent upon all of us to understand that we have changed how we operate. And that it is really for the safety and, and the ongoing operation of our town to keep, keep it this way. Yep. And I also, I also just one other thing I'm adding, uh, the Franklin Conservation District, which I also chair, is meeting on Thursday because it is really wonderful. People are staying home. They're supporting local businesses. And we have um, farmers that are running out of land to farm. So we're setting up um, a clearinghouse, hopefully, to connect farmers with more farmland and um, trying to figure out how we can adapt the programs, the farm bill programs to this current situation. So um, it's very interesting and um, we're getting a lot of help from the federal government, um, mm -hmm. USDA on this. Um, they're being very supportive. So Great. hopefully um, you will continue to support our local farmers. I will say one more thing, Trevor, yes, that please. we are um, both on the town clerk page and the treasurer collector page of our website. Um, we are constantly updating um, that information. So right. um, I know a lot of people are very diligent about their bills and you know the, yep. the dog licenses are coming due and trash um, stickers are gonna be sold soon and everybody's kind of looking ahead and worrying about how all that is gonna happen. And right. we're totally aware of that. And once Good. we're given the um, power by new legislation, if there is any extension on bills, we just don't know that yet. But as soon right. as we know anything, it's um, updated we there. are going to put it on the website. So it's Great. deerfieldma.us. Um, whether it's a tax bill or, or something about the town clerk's, you know, yep. dog licenses or any kind of thing, we update it constantly. Great. So um, that is a great resource to Perfect. look at. Um, yep. If you're, if you're wondering about anything. We, we just don't have the ability to delay anything quite yet right. um, in the legislature as yep. far as um, and I know they're working tax on bills that. or taxation. That's all still churning. So, it is. It is. Um, they're working hard on that. But if any of that gets changed and the government allows us to do any extensions or we decide to do extensions if we're given that yep. ability, then we will post it there. Perfect. Um, and the, the last thing before we move on to the next item I wanted to mention was, um, again, we are 
feeding seniors uh, lunch, and then they usually get a breakfast with that for the following day uh, with the lunch when they pick up here. Um, Waitley, Sunderland, and Deerfield are kind of coming through. Um, I just wanted to mention if you are in need of that, as more and more people are required to stay home in isolation or in quarantine, um, please call 413-665-2141. It's Christina Johnson, and our, she's the director of our senior center. And if you have any needs as far as nutrition goes, please reach out to us. We want to help. Um, so right now it's a drive through and pick up if you can. Um, we don't have a ton of volunteers. We can deliver if you're at home, and, and we're trying to work to that because we want you to stay home. So it's just taking time to build up enough uh, capacity to be able to deliver. But right now, it's kind of a drive-through. And, and if you must stay at home, please let us know. We'll definitely get food to you. So um, you can call again, 413-665-2141. So, and I, and I'd just like to say that um, Mary Lipinski, uh, Dave's wife, um, has volunteered to start organizing and updating our volunteers for our, um, our EDSs. So mm -hmm. um, it will yeah. be wonderful. If anyone is interested, they can uh, let us know in our Selectman's office, call in uh, to the Selectman's office, and or talk to Mary. And yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll try um, to get a link on the website and yeah. put some posts out so it's not yeah. going to have an easy way for people to sign up. Um, for that and um, so speaking about elections in town meeting as things are moving forward do, do you want to add anything or there do you was to... one thing I wanted to add please, brown please. bag is gonna happen this Thursday it's usually the first Thursday of the month so brown bag is typically yeah. the first it's Thursday usually of the held month. in this room here but, but it's gonna... actually gonna be out Side. So okay. the brown bag that's going to be held is going to be held outside. It's going to be a drive-through. So people are okay. going to come in and pick up what they need and drive on. Okay. Um, it's really limiting limiting social social contact. Okay. And this is being set up through the food bank. Okay. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a number right now because I haven't yep. gotten that you, yet. You would right. contact the senior center. Um, yes. Right. Most of the people are, are regulars that do come. I, um, At, but from the if senior you center. are yeah. interested in that service and you're not already subscribed or however call they them. end yep. up, um, call the, call the 2141 yeah, okay. at the senior Great. center. Yeah. That sounds good. Thank you for reminding. Um, you. So, uh, you know, our next, um, our next topic is the election in town meeting postponement, which we wanted to discuss. Um, Obviously, you know, usually we have our meeting at the end of April, um, and then our election is the first Monday of May. But um, with all going on right now and, and the order from the, from the state and the governor, we, we are, find the need to move that, um, move the election and the town meeting. So do you want to take on, or do you want me to kind of say what I think we're going to do? Um, I, we were just given Discussing. the authority to do anything just right. recently so yes, thank you um, yeah. yeah election because so uh, up until then we, we we didn't have that authority to do that so right um, there's been uh, legislation that was passed that allowed us to change the election yeah. um, and and it kind of operates separate from town meetings so we typically do them together and we think of them as one unit and this year right we'll be um, handling them on two separate warrants and, and separately just so that we can uh, kind of Just adhere to the need. new legislation. It's, yeah, exactly. Um, uh, let's see. So, so the 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 plan right now would be to call two again, to call two warrants, and our um, annual town meeting would be held at Frontier, uh, we believe, um, at uh, on June first, mm -hmm. and then our election would be June eighth, uh, would be the following mm -hmm. Monday. So it's a common schedule that everyone's used to. Uh, you know, a, a Monday for our town election and then a, a town meeting and then the following Monday would be our town election. And we're still working out all the um, apparatus. I would, yeah, I guess I would um, take that one step back. Please, yeah, one step <laughs> From back. what Trevor just said. Um, so I think the, the idea at this point, just because it seems like every day is something, um, is a new day. And, it is. And we don't know um, certainly what, um, May 4th would look like, which is where our election was supposed to be, or, or April Correct. 27th, where our town meeting was. Yep. But it certainly doesn't seem like it would be good. So we've decided to extend it maybe into June. However, we didn't want to go too far into June because we do know that if, if right. everybody's able to travel, that's when everybody kind of takes off. So right. the idea was to get um, the budget in place and, and um, after 
uh, Memorial Day. We certainly didn't want to strike anything around there. So I, I guess we arrived at the dates just yeah. kind of um, that way. I think, they, I think they make sense. <laughs> to get it um, done before the end of the fiscal year. Right. But I will say just cautiously, mm -hmm. uh, while we've picked the dates and we feel it can relatively confident about that, um, I don't think we're confident about anything else beyond that. Um, right. Yes, it's typically held at Frontier. We're yep. being open-minded. We um, are. We, we have are. The election for space to be held. Yeah. Some space to be held for us. Correct. Right. We so I think we're going to have a strong announcement um, once a little, maybe after the May 4th right. um, governor updates. Um, I think that would be a great time to have another one of these just so just you guys get can get your warrant together. And I will okay. say that the... Um, the annual town election, the legislation allowed us to change the date, but it's not changing the election at all. The the slate of um, candidates is is Already frozen. Set. Everything is just frozen. It's just happening at a different date. Right. Um, right. So that's pretty much what we're doing. We're just kind of taking all of it as it was and moving it over to a different date. Right. Um, but we might have to be creative. I think the I election agree. might turn into more of an absentee voting election. Um, yes. We might have more limited hours. Um, there's been all sorts of creative ways. Um, the bottom line is we want everyone to feel um, included included and accessible to voting, and we want it to be fair to all the candidates, and, and we want the budget to pass and, you know, right. uh, and have a, everyone in the ability to review it and, and discuss it. So, and, so that's, the, <laughs> and I think that's our, the goal. Our main goal was to really focus on, I mean, and, and we can, this is up for discussion, but I think that the thought was that we would focus on um, finances and budgetary things at, at this annual town meeting um, and maybe more of the zoning stuff or things that are kind of can be put off mm -hmm. put off so we're in you know if we're in a meeting it's a short amount of time and then we we move on and do another another election later on when it's a little safer for meeting special town meeting later or special town meeting that, yeah. for for a later later time to address some of those you know anything we have for zoning any any of that kind of stuff so yeah. i don't know what your thoughts are on that but well i uh, quite honestly i i think the indications are that it will be june before it's relatively mm -hmm. you know dies down mm -hmm. right april is going to be bad and may yep. is going to be bad mm -hmm. and there are um cases in the southern hemisphere you know they're winter now so that means there's going to be another wave in the fall so I, I i can't say i mean i would hate to say that plan for the fall and the fall might be just as bad no as it could now. be in the summer sure. something yeah. like that mm -hmm. or yeah. i mean i don't it's but never I, a really I great think time June to do it might still be you know people still might be hesitant so it'd be nice to have a town meeting that's kind of a little bit quicker where we don't linger any longer than we necessarily have to together absolutely um and and we are yeah. being creative in some of the ideas that we're floating out of how we can i i you think know, if, kind of if cover if it. i i think the idea to me i don't think mm. there's going to be a lot of travel because other mm -hmm. parts of the country will be um uh, experiencing what we're experiencing now right and um, I, I so I think if we had a meeting in the late summer um, in the in the day mm -hmm. because of mosquitoes you got to mm -hmm. watch out for mosquitoes and the disease loads are more in the evening and the you know mm -hmm. early morning so if we had um, some kind of outdoor meeting where people bring their lawn chairs and mm -hmm. we space everybody out that might be for a special that we town can, meeting yeah. yeah 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 no. Yep. I mean, that we'll to me would be more of ear. a, I mean, we're going to sure. know more as time goes on, right. but I, yep. I would think that would be more realistic than waiting till the fall yeah. mm -hmm. because we might still be operating like this in the fall. Right. Yeah. There's, there's a good chance we're going to have two special town meetings. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're going to have, because for the, our normal meeting, I, I concur that we should do the financial things that we have to do to keep the town running. Yep. And then all the other auxiliary stuff that's on the warrant, typically we can do it a special early in the summer. Mm -hmm. And then once free cash is established, we can address some of the things that we may have to right. uh, to mm -hmm. continue the town the way it should run. Absolutely. So Yeah, um, finances are going to be tough this year. So. Yeah. Because One thing, Dan and I had a conversation, Dan Graves. Mm -hmm. um, and... Keep in mind, this is the moderator's meeting, so he wants to be involved in any discussion. And I keep mm -hmm. trying to figure out if he's on the call because I can't get are into the back the call, end of Dan? the call. I am. Oh, hi, Dan. Oh, good. How are you? Thank Welcome. God. <laughs> hi, everybody. Hi, Dan. <laughs> Please yeah, chime I would in. just add that, you know, if there is any auxiliary stuff that really needs to be done, yes. um, 
you know, a lot of towns are moving to consent agendas, similar to how we handle the budget. Um, we could have a series of kind of quote unquote non controversial motions yep. that we would go through. Would there be a motion to say the following 10, and then if for some reason there's something that there is a need for discussion, those can be put on hold, um, and we could get through some of the auxiliary if there's anything critical. Okay. Um, it's just another creative approach that some towns are using. So. Yeah, thank you. That's where I was going with it was Dan's comment about a consent agenda. A lot Great. of towns use it. Yeah. The only thing I would be cautious about, and I had this thought after we got off the phone, Dan, um, if we use, I think we have to be judicious about how we use a consent agenda because if, if all the things that the board has considered putting on the warrant including all the financial articles, some of those could be some, engender quite a bit of discussion. Mm -hmm. So that was my only cautionary well, thought yeah, was anything that's kind of non land use and stuff might yeah. be, might get a little bit in depth. That's, right. That was something that came up. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, we would want to anticipate really almost nothing going on hold. If, if we get into things going on hold, we're going to be in the, the mess we want to avoid. That's true. Yeah. So we could look at all those articles. The idea of using a what. consent agenda, even if we used it, just to simplify the budget maybe, Dan, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. might be really useful. I don't know how the finance committee is going to feel about that. Well, they typically, I'm ducking. everybody goes one item at a time, as Dan knows. <laughs> so, <laughs> they all want to look I at I think that. it's a creative way to look at it. And what I yeah. said to Dan was, I'll check in with a colleague of mine who know, who's seen what that consent agenda looks like. Okay. The one Concord we'll uses one. Sure. I, I think people are more willing to do things because I, I think we're going to have to review things every couple months. You know, or, or at least a, a quarterly basis as we go, because we won't know mm -hmm. how our revenues are matching up with our expenses, and mm -hmm. we, we'll, we'll have to make some adjustments, I'm sure. Yeah. Great. Um, so I guess that that that's you know kind of where we're at for now. It's, mm -hmm. it's we're thinking beginning of June, and we'll we'll have a little more hard data as the month goes by, and we see what's going on. Um, anything else we want to add to that topic? Or do you need um, any votes from us or no? Yes. Or you do need a I vote from us? I think we need now? to vote just to indicate to people that we're considering doing this. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I, I make a motion. Not oh. only considering oh. that so you're yeah. actually postponing. Yeah, I'll make a motion that yeah. the select board I postpone the town meeting and the town election oh, to oh, oh. Wait. June 1st and June 8th, respectively. No, um, we actually have a. We've got two uh, motions. There's two um, separate okay. votes. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Two separate. Oh, okay. Sorry. I got some help with okay. that. Oh, um, I'm sorry. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Coming in late. Okay. The uh, pursuant to Chapter 45 of the Acts of 2020, an act granting authority to postpone 2020 municipal election in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and increase voting options in response to the de declaration of emergency. To respond to the COVID-19, the select board shall propose postpone the town election currently scheduled for May 4th, 2020 to be held on June 8th, 2020. And I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Casey, for putting this together. Thank Lisa. We just sussed it out later. <laughs> Great. And second? Uh, okay. The uh, pursuant to General Laws Chapter 39, Section 9, Due to the governor's declaration of emergency to respond to the COVID-19, the select board shall postpone annual town meeting from April 27th, 2020 to June 1st, 2020. Second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Carolyn? Yeah. Yep, you're good. Okay. Do we have to do a roll call? Hmm? We're all in the room. We're all in You're the room. all in the same room, so okay. I don't think you have to do yeah. a roll okay. call. Okay. But we are spaced six feet yes, apart. Yes, you are. I tried <laughs> my best. I'm pretty far away. Um, so are you feeling? <laughs> <laughs> so we will. We'll definitely keep people up to date. And as, mm -hmm. as Barb said, check. You know, you can always check the town website um, under the clerk's office. Um, mm -hmm. So she'll keep everybody up to date as soon as we know, and we'll we'll talk about this at every meeting when we when we have some information um so trevor I, I know the board knows but basically once the warrant posts we kind of move into 10a which would require you know the moderator to consult with the members of the board and public safety officials who um set a new date certain if june 1 comes and it needs to go thank right. you um, thank you for saying that yes 
That'd so it is the moderator. Of the moderator has, has, once you post that warrants, once we call it's in it, his hands. it's in his hands. That's perfect. Thank you. Um, and then, um, so moving on from that subject, unless anyone else has anything else to say on that, we're good. Yes, Trevor. Oh, Trevor, hello. this is your friend Dick Evans. Hi, Dick. How are you? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I'm fine. It's the, it's, uh, the ATF, the annual town meeting, is now um, uh, uh, June 8th. Then I think that would mean, doesn't it, that the warrant for that meeting will close on, on May 8th because the bylaw, the town bylaw, says the warrant closes 30, 30 days before the date scheduled for the annual town meeting. So That's June 1, I, Dick. I just think it's good to point out, I think, that, that would, the warrant would close for that town meeting, the financial stuff. On June, on, uh, June May, 8th. Uh, on May 1st. Then. On May Is 1st. it June 8th or June 1st? Uh, June, June 1. June 1 would be the date we're hoping for. Oh, 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 oh well, that's, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, you're... Uh, so you're thinking May 1st. Okay, okay, that means, June May 1, that means the warrant okay. would close on May 1. Yes. That, that means the warrant would close on May 1. Right. Well, actually, well, we the had, board has already voted to close the warrant. Yeah, we had closed we the warrant. We voted to close the warrant. We had placeholders for the articles that had been requested. Right. But because we're, we're trying to cope with how long our town meeting should be and whether it should just be financial articles or not, that's a discussion I think the board has to have in, in more detail right. as we get further into this. Mm -hmm. Right. Does that make sense, Dick? So we're, we're still deciding. Oh, sure. I, just, I, I, I was just, the point of these remarks was to suggest that w there ought to be clearly established if there is a new uh, warrant closing date, if there is a new well, annual well, we meeting I think the new date. legislation um, has any yeah, of those. Yeah. Um, the bylaw, the town bylaw, I, I believe, I'm pretty sure, I don't have it in front of me, says that the, yeah, we, says the annual town meeting shall be the last statute. Monday in April, and the warrant shall close a month before. Well, we again, we already closed the so warrant if, in anticipation of that, um, but whether whether we open that back up again is, is uh, something we'll have to talk with, let, you know, we'll see what the legislation comes out yeah, yeah. around that. I expect you'll want to. You'll want to to sort out the financial stuff and Correct. the non-controversial stuff you want to put in your belt. Exactly. Put off the other stuff till later. Yep. Yeah. yep. Okay. Yeah. Sounds and, good. And quick, and, and is it June 1st or June 8th? June 1st, June 1st, excuse me, June 1st would be our okay. plan for annual town meeting, and, and June 8th is our hope for election. Okay, perfect. Yep. Um, okay, so um, there was an item um, unanticipated 48 hours prior to posting, which was bond anticipation notes for signature. Mm -hmm. And um, do you want to speak to that a little bit? Um, so this is just the paperwork um, in conclusion of what you've all decided in the refunding of two um, loans that we have for the school roof, Yep. Um, which is coming to maturity on the 10th and the refinance of the uh, natural New England natural, natural bakers, bakers land, land that uh, was coming due the 30th of April. So um, kind of went out to bid now, hopping on the low interest rates, and yes. we certainly secured a great rate for um, these bands will run for a year. Great. Yeah. And they'll both be uh, at an interest rate of 1.19. 1 1 yeah, wow. which is Very great. nice. Yep. Good job. So that makes yeah, sense to do that great. now. Yeah. So, um, so do you, you need a motion on these? I, I will make a, a motion to sign the uh, bond anticipation notes that Barbara has prepared yep. for us. Mm -hmm. One is for the land acquisition and one is for the school roof. Do I have a second? I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, so it looks like there'll be a signature. Lots There's of signatures. There's lots of signatures. Oh, we all, we, and we all sign, it looks like. Mm -hmm. yeah, right? yep. yeah. All, all three of you. Yep. Okay, um, Why, Trevor's doing that. How's mm -hmm. the RFP for the natural bakers? How's that going? We still need the land survey, and that's, oh. I know, I know. <laughs> Hold your breath. <laughs> I am. Um, I'm just a lot I'm, of these I'm things seeing. we haven't been able to circle back around to, and it's part of it is just COVID nineteen. I know. Um, I know. We've been all. We, it is on the the radar screen. It's just, I got to get there. Okay. So. So, but it is a priority to get that out, right? Yes, I know. Okay. Um, and and so, um, Trevor, our uh, meeting was canceled on the sewer. Um, yes. Do you want me to give an update on that? Yeah, I would like you to give an update, but I also just, um, because I know you were reaching out and getting the information, 
up to date, but um, um, just in anticipation of maybe a shovel ready um, infrastructure project. I've um, have have talked you with him got already. them ready to go? Yes, okay. so I've talked All with. Right. I uh, just wanted to make sure we're ready to go. I'm in almost daily contact with, um, yeah. with um, Dave Brickett, so I spoke to him today, and um, we're, he's on the same page as me of trying to get something moving earlier for USDA for the second phase of that project, because there is talk um, in Washington about doing a large, maybe 2.2, two, two, uh, tr it's hard to say the number, $2 trillion infrastructure program um, and that um, and, and wastewater is a, is a large part of that. So we want to be a part of that too. So we're, we're looking at, you know, obviously all the work we're doing now, but with the second phase and we, we have the other plant up at the, um, you know, up in Old Deerfield to deal with after all this. So um, there's been a lot of conversations around that. So we're, we're looking maybe earlier than summer to try and get that together. He okay. has feelers out to USDA because he's doing a project in Hardwick that they're moving away, right moving on right away. So he's trying to get some info through that process, how, how Deerfield looks. Okay, so, perfect, yeah, perfect. So we're I, definitely just, I just wanted, I mean, I was, all the things that I was reading on what they were doing and it potentially was, um, you know, look really good for us. And so I just wanted us to be in a position to take take advantage of yes, whatever. Yes, exactly. And, and that really was where Casey was, we were talking earlier about our MVP. What we were thinking of next is, um, and I just wanted you all to have consensus on this, is our really our next worst area is we have River Road and we have up on five and ten, Wapping you know, whopping and, and whopping down to Mill Village. Down to Mill Village. Yeah, yeah. that whole area. And um, I think, you know, this is an opportunity for us to bring all these things that we've been working on for years together up there between the, um, you know, the Mosquito District and the, uh, you know, the protocol for changing back farmland that has been become wet because of the silting in, you know, reclaiming that farmland. We can work with the Franklin Land Trust because they hold the conservationist restriction in that area. And so we want to pull this all together as much as we can um, pretty soon. So if that money can, becomes available, we can grab it. So I we're, think my we're, only caution is that we need to make sure that we're remembering we've got 12 pro MVP projects going right now, small and large. Um, if we get too, too many going, it could be detrimental to some of the other stuff that's got to happen. So one of the things, John had mentioned it to me, was the, the Wapping Road onto Mill Village, the culvert that runs from Wapping down to Mill Village. And I knew that there was the soil thing. Um, so I think we need to be judicious about it. And oh, I wonder I mean, if it would be a useful thing to to maybe have Chris Curtis chime in mm -hmm. at the next meeting. Yeah, well, what we're talking about is design and engineering. Yeah, for the not, design for not the actually Mill imp Village implementation, because the implementation is going to be yeah. a million or two or, you know, so it would be much more lovely to get a project. If we get the design that we done don't and have make to it match. shovel ready, it yeah. would be very useful. It's just I'm afraid of getting too many things going oh, yeah. in this next round. Yep. Well, so, that's why, yeah. That's why I was thinking well, there's that there's nothing the else going on. <laughs> so I'll give a um, a quick quick that update me, on, our, Casey, on our sewer uh, sewer work. We did um, just because of COVID, we we did cancel getting getting together on that. But we had already we had an emergency meeting recently um, with all the stuff going on at the at the plant. And I did give a little bit of an update last week, but I'll just read. Um, I've got an update here. So this is work completed since uh, February 20 first um, progress meeting. So um, DPC responded to several shop drawing submittals um, provided by the water line, the contractor. These included uh, grout concrete painting, pipe fittings and secondary and the secondary clarifier equipment. Um, water line was on site on uh, March 24th for the draining of the secondary clarifier tank to obtain field measurements and to provide uh, for the manufacturer to release the equipment for manufacturing. Keith's assistance in troubleshooting was critical in ensuring the work uh, went, uh, went as planned. Um, DPC was on site in the morning to observe the work. Based on observations of the bottom grout layer uh, in the existing tank, um, it has been proposed that uh, this grout not be demolished and replaced, but reused. 
Uh, this will save some cost to the town, which would offset the cost for the additional tank draining and bypass work provided by Waterline. That was because of that emergency valve, that valve wouldn't shut off. So they came to help with that and, um, and took care of that stuff, which was a which is small change order. Um, the work on um, March 24th required Waterline to construct a temporary bulkhead to stop the flow to the secondary clarifier tank. This work is not currently part of the contractor's scope uh, for work since the secondary clarifier tank ha uh, has an isolation valve to stop the flow to the secondary clarifier. The valve has uh, failed and is inoperable. Waterline is eligible for a change order for this work. Um, but they did a great job and got that all done so we can get it out to manufacturing. So uh, planned work, uh, DPC will continue to process incoming uh, shop drawing submittals. Uh, clarifier equipment is expected on site later this summer with no major work activities expected until that time. Um, items for discussion were the spalled concrete that was observed, observed along one side of the secondary clarifier tank. Um, question was, do we want to address this issue and repair the concrete while the unit is down <coughs> for discussion with the town? Waterline has expressed the ability to perform the work via change order and compare, can prepare preliminary cost estimates for this time. I think we were gonna hold on that a bit because I think we were talking about trying to wrap that into an MVP grant. So I did yeah. talk to Dave about that. So, but we'll, we'll discuss that further. Um, it was just timing because those grants are irregular mm -hmm. still. Right. And, um, but we wanna put it in yeah. as much as we can. Yep, so, so we're talking about, about that and um, Keith has indicated that the existing secondary clarifier weirs and baffles are unlevel and uneven, approximately off by one inch. Um, you know, do we want to replace the weirs and baffles while the unit is down? Um, this is up for discussion. Waterline has expressed the ability to perform this work again if we wanted to do that now or, or in the second phase. I think a lot of that was going to move to phase two, but that was just a discussion there. So. Um, that was that product, the project, the uh, South Deerfield Wastewater Treatment Facility Upgrade Project. This is in design phase. Um, so DPC received and updated the operational data through February 2020. This data was used to update the estimated current influent flows and loads. Um, DPC started to compile information to build a preliminary hydraulic model for the proposed project. Um, DPC coordinated with equipment manufacturers and it's obtained preliminary sizing equipment selection for key pieces of the equipment, um, influent screen, grit removal, UV disinfectant, solid handling. Um, so planned work is the ge uh, geotechnical borings that are expected to be performed at the plant uh, site in April uh, to, be, um, to be confirmed based on the driller's schedule and availability. Uh, DPC is drafting a design flows and loads memorandum for distribution and discussion. The memorandum will outline the design flows and loads as well as the anticipated allocation for Berkshire Brewing. So we talked a bit about that today and how much we want to anticipate that oh, flow to be. Good. So we really went to talk to them. Do they have expansion in, in, in mind? Do they have space for expansion? What are the, you know, the long-term um, plans of that and how will it affect the plant going forward? So. Um, that'll be something to discuss. Um, DPC will utilize the basis of design flows and loads to coordinate with um, aeration system equipment manufacturers to obtain preliminary sizing equipment selections based on discussions with the operation staff. The aeration system implementation included in phase two will be based um, around a, a hybrid system that can operate as an aeration system and or a mixing system for uh, cyclical aeration operation. So it might be a hybrid system. We'll have to think about that. Um, one of the, once the design flows- Is there a cost difference in that? I think he'll put all that together okay. for us in the design yep, analysis. So once the design flows and loads are finalized, DPC will develop a, um, a draft basis of design report. The draft basis of design report will include the following components. Hydraulic model based on basis of design equipment selections, mass balance um, based on design flows and loads, process flow diagram based on the basis of design equipment selections, single line electrical diagram based on the basis of design and equipment selections, and a preliminary site plan. Um, so they'll be in contact to schedule a next monthly meeting, which I talked to him about. He's kind of trying to pull together that 
again around 25 percent basis of design i know we just get that really ready busy. so um, but i just want to make sure everyone is clear please no wipes we cannot yes. afford to have this go down so yep. no clorox wipes no regular flushable please don't wipes. go in the toilet no but use nothing. them on your hands and on your desk and throw them in the trash when done yep we just can't afford it um anything else you want to hit on tonight no i i uh i'm sure there's a whole bunch of stuff obviously we want to follow up on but um everybody's been so crazy and busy and mm. so yep uh, a lot of things have not I mean, I've taken taking a back seat yeah. to emergencies. Yep. So I just, you know, I apologize for people that are expecting us to. I mean, we're everybody is working every day, yeah, all day. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> yep, a lot. From the, home, uh, from here. Our first responders in town have been doing a tremendous job. They you have. Know, they're firing on all cylinders. Have Police. contingency plans in place just in case. Yep. Um, they have been. Police have been amazing. Yeah. John's put together a really good plan, yeah. and he's keeping in uh, contact with them every day. Both chiefs have done yes. a remarkable job. Uh, Chief Paturik has really been on top of things, and he was yep. had a lot of plans in place before this actually even hit mm -hmm. the media too much. So, yep. Uh, he's, and, the, and the same as Zach. I, I yeah. have to say Zach has the exact same thing. He's you know really been proactive trying to... Mm -hmm. We, we, you know, we, he's trying to get um, personal protective equipment. PPE is short mm -hmm. everywhere. It is. And um, so we're putting in orders. We're trying to s sort things out. And then just being there for his staff, too. I mean, because yeah. it's a scary time for, for our police officers to be out there and our EMS um, first responders to be out there. And, you know, you don't know what you're getting into. And they know how to protect themselves and protect the public. So... Um, but it's just a scary time for people. And, um, you know. And, and to that point, I'd like to thank all the staff for their patience yeah. and understanding because the uncertainty right now is incredible. And they're all feeling the pinch. They are. And, they you are. know, everybody's worried. They're worried about their families, they're worried about themselves. Yeah. So, you know, everybody's doing the best they can to get the job that they do. Completed. They've been vital. They've been, really have. Been I amazing. so appreciate all the work they're doing, and I know you guys do too. We do. So we do. I just want to make sure that people hear that. Yeah. Because we are working very hard. DPW has been doing a great job. To try job. to keep up with things and the changing landscape that's happening. Yeah. Literally every hour. Yep. I, Kevin's I, been great. I, I think His that's guys what have the been hardest great. Is that yeah. I mean, the guys at the transfer station are masking when yeah, I go there on the DPW guys. They're, they're they're just all working so hard. Wearing gloves. They're they're doing the best thing this they is, can. This is quite different. I I know people think that, you know, I mean, this is really we we went through the bird flu, we went through the swine flu H1N1, but in both cases we had federal leadership and CDC was telling mass dph what was happening and then it came down to our level this is totally reversed that you know um there's a real lag on the state level but at least we have charlie baker making decisions willing to make decisions uh, there is no job. guidance from the federal government it's it's really two or three weeks behind mm -hmm. and it's it's just it's so freaky to have this situation this is it's not good but no. everyone is coping yeah. And um, everyone is pulling together, and that's why it's so important to please, please stay home and be patient as much as you can with this. This is, I know everyone's going crazy, it's very but hard. we just got to stay home and get through this. What we, we closed the offices down two weeks ago, so hopefully, we're going to start seeing the benefit of closing our town down in the next week, and the following week, and the following week. So please be patient. Um, People are really, you know, I know some people are being really vigilant, and then there's other people that aren't. So please, please try to, if you aren't as good as you think you can be, try to work a little harder for everybody. Okay, and on a final note on my part is just commend Casey Warren. Yes. She came in at probably the worst possible time to come into a <laughs> to new work job. work in progress, folks. Thank yeah. you, but yes. everybody else is really helping me along. I know, but yep. it's just, you know, it's all about leadership. Mm -hmm. And I depend and, on the entire crew to help me with and that. And you do. And, you know, 
leadership is very ineffective if you don't have a team. Yep. And that's what we're but working leadership on. Leadership is, is different is than the definition of leading instead of dictating. Yeah. And it just, um, you know, it just, we have our staff up, you know, uh, Jennifer is now on board. Yep, she's doing a great um, job. Uh, I met her today. She's wonderful. She's wonderful. I mean, I talk, just, you know, I've talked to her on the phone, but I've truly met her today for the yeah. first time. She's so, wonderful. you know, it's uh, fortunately for the town of Deerfield, we've got a lot of players in place at the right time mm -hmm. to make sure that we're going yeah. to help me out, to help yeah. everyone mm -hmm. else out. I mean, I really yeah. rely on John and Zach and yeah. Barb yeah. to help me through a lot of this, just yeah. relearning everything. And I would so uh, to their credit, that's absolutely. why I wanted to do a shout out and thank yes. everybody because yeah. each person plays a role in this. They do. And I would, um, I thank you too. For whether, all. whether they're management, whether they're the guy at the transfer station, absolutely. you know, we it all play a, a role and if we can work together, it's going to make it that much easier for us to help the townspeople. And then, um, and then I would just like to also thank, um, Diana Schindler, whose last day was today. Yes. She did, um, she carried us through, you know, when we had nobody, and she did yeah. a great job, and um, wish her well on her next adventure. Um, she is taking another job in another town, and um, very happy. I wish her all the luck, and I, I thank her for all her assistance when she was here, and she taught me a lot, and um, helped us through a lot of, a and lot of one of the things of that we said to Diana when she left today was, you know, it's not goodbye. We'll see you again. Yes. You know, absolutely. because there will be opportunities for us to share information. And, yeah. You know. Yeah, there's a lot she just, knows that we'll all need to kind of go, hey, yeah. what did you do with that? And there's <laughs> a larger team out that? there. You there know, is. There's, it's, it's there's a, a group. huge it's number of people trying people. to manage this for small towns it and is. large towns. Your STAM mm -hmm. group is just, I'm sure, doing an Stam amazing group, job. STAM group, the HR group. Yeah. I mean, the number of email that we plow through, and I know I send a lot of, I send you guys yes. a lot of the stuff I get because it's information that really needs to sit in the back of your head. It does. Um, you think about it a little bit. And you that go, information oh, yeah. is key as you're trying to mitigate your circumstances. Yeah. And I yep. just ask people to be patient with us because we're just, we're literally trying to wait on the fly. slog through the mire of information. <laughs> right. So. Thank you all. Thank you very much. I appreciate sure. you coming in, and I appreciate yep. you signing the bans and discussing the elections and town yeah. meeting because we're just trying to keep our eye on the yep yep the ball. So motion to adjourn. I make the motion. I'll second it. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, John.